Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, video podcast where me and my best friend Carl play uh, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detectives demo for the new green box, the Baker Street Irregulars. <laughs> I'm going to ask how you're doing, Carl, but this is the third time we've recorded this, so the answer is probably knackered, right? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm doing great, you know. Um, don't forget to like, sub subscribe, share, smash that like button. Pound that like button. <laughs> Um, so we're playing. You told them. You've told them already what we're playing. Um, <laughs> we've we've played through all of the other consulting detectives, Sherlock Holmes consulting detective games that have been like re-released since by there was Space Cowboys. Who was the other one? Uh, it's Starry. Starry Games. How could I forget? Yes. So we were very excited. We're very excited about this new. Um, yeah, ex game excited but trepidatious because this is the first new cases for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective written since like the 70s. Apart from the Jack the Ripper one, which I think is new. Um, and interestingly, that Jack the Ripper one was arguably one of the best ones that we played. Yes, that was fantastic. Really well researched as well. Um, but the guy who's, who's wrote this one is more or less a complete unknown. And also the blue box, which is the one immediately before this, was filled with, uh, I guess you could only describe them in the most diplomatic terms as gargantuan editorial problems. <laughs> um, there's a, a, an immense language barrier, a Great Wall of China-esque <laughs> language barrier. <laughs> um, so, really, if you look at the series, you've got the original brown box uh, full of classic adventures, the red box, more experimental, more exciting. The blue box, which has now become a totemic representation of everything wrong with the process of internationalization. And now the green box, which is completely unknown. So we have no idea what we're getting, uh, we're getting in for uh, with this, this process. Uh, we're quietly optimistic because the person who's doing this new version appears to speak English as a first language. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so it, it, here's the thing, right? I'd love for this box set to be amazing, but honestly, at this point, I will settle for it being competent and readable. That's what I'm looking for in this demo. That's why we're playing this. That's why we're making this video, because I feel like a lot of people got burnt out on the blue box. And this will be a way for you to, uh, I guess we recommend playing it, playing the demo. But if you're not thinking about playing the demo, you can watch us play it like a bunch of clowns and uh, decide if it's worth picking up this box uh, for yourself. The streets of London are a harsh place for young children, with no parents to care for... I've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the first time we're recording this. So, <laughs> apparently this is written from Wiggins' point of view. Uh, oh, and how old is Wiggins? <laughs> well, with no, <laughs> with no parents to care for us... We've been left to scrape for a living in various ways. Begging, chimney sweeping, selling goods on the street. And amongst our hardship, we formed some strong friendships. We met Wiggins a month ago. A confident and witty seven-year-old <laughs> who is described no. as a year older than most of us. In fairness, the game calls him a year older than most of us. So, <laughs> so we might be 34-year-old street <laughs> urchins. <laughs> I'm around for 60 <laughs> Well, he's the leader of the gang, you know. We can't depose this six-year-old. We have already begun to see him as our natural leader. Early one Saturday morning, he gathers us together. Last week, he tells us, I became acquainted with a distinguished gentleman, a consulting detective, so he calls himself, who goes by the name of Mr Sherlock Holmes. I helped him in a little matter, and he was flashed with praise. Now he's asked me to form a gang of plucky and sharp-witted folk... Will what will be like an unofficial police force at his disposal? <laughs> right, I'm calling into question. Right, how reliable a narrator Wiggins is here. Right, the way that Sherlock Wiggins Holmes has no recollection of meeting this seven-year-old. <laughs> he, he must have. He, he threw a, a, a copper shield into him in the street, and like Wiggins thinks he's part of the gang now. Yeah, Wiggins has been hearing a lot about Sherlock Holmes, and it's like this is all fan fiction that Wiggins is writing to his urchin <laughs> friends. Uh, so we'll help to solve crimes, says Tinker, the youngest of us, <laughs> who, who's reached puberty the fastest. 
<laughs> That's it, replies Wiggins, and we begin to chatter excitedly. And, he continues, raising his voice to be heard, in return, we'll garner a shilling per day and a guinea for a vital clue. But first, there's a test. A test? exclaims Simpson, a stocky red-headed... Cowboy. <laughs> Cowboy. <laughs> like at school? <laughs> We burst into raucous laughter at his terrible <laughs> accent. <laughs> no, replies Wiggins, uh, dismissing him out of hand. Not a jot like school. Mr. Holmes needs to know we're up to the work. Have you heard of Gilly the Ghost? We nod. Gilly the Ghost, real name Gilly Niles, is one of the most notorious thieves of the West End. An expert in disguise, she can change her appearance in seconds, making any pursuers think that she has vanished into the air. Once disguised as a male doorman, she made away with a hotel guest's entire set of luggage. She also worked as an actress, until she was caught stealing from the theatre, and spent several months in Millbank prison. Some of us know her by sight. She's in her twenties, has brown hair, and seems constantly on the alert. Like a cat. Okay, well, we'll file that one away as, like, a Z-tier clue. Um, <laughs> perhaps a cat? <laughs> Gilly's been seen around Trafalgar Square a lot as of late, Wiggins continues. Mr. Holmes believes she has some kind of skaldaggery in mind. He's given us two tasks. First, we must find out what she's planning. Second, we must try to stop her plan from going ahead. So, lads, do you want to be detectives? Our response is an enthusiastic yawn. Shouldn't that be lads and lasses? Come on. <laughs> uh, you know, okay, that's true, actually. Some women might play this game. It's not notorious for being a misogynistic game. I don't know. It's not, it's not exactly 40k, is it? I mean, no. come on. <laughs> um, well then, let's show Mr. Arms what we're made of. Okay, <laughs> and there we go. The case of the... Finding a person case. And the instructions, which we didn't read last time, and also last time didn't happen, now investigate using the directory map and informants, um, etc., etc. We've played Consulting Detective before. We're going to kind of assume that if you're watching this, you also have. Um, the way it works is it's like a choose your own adventure book, except there are no numbers at the bottom of the page. So you have to work out where to go next using just your brain and noggin. Uh, and the way that these cases usually start, and the way that we like to start, is by reading the newspaper. Every day you get a newspaper, and it's full of clues and red herrings and all sorts of fluff, and it's it's what we're going to do now. The newspaper. Um, we are looking for a thief and a, and a, 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 a disguised artist. Um, so I'm thinking that Raphael in National Gallery... Raphael's Ansi de Madonna will be on display at the Upper West Wing of the National Gallery September 1st to December 10th. The gallery is rumoured to be in discussions to purchase the painting for a sum exceeding £50,000. So a possible art theft? You know? Possible cash theft. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's almost like we've done this before. <laughs> um, so, yeah, quite difficult to steal a painting and maybe it like a... A low-level street hustler is probably not going to steal a painting and try and fence it. So, but fifty thousand pounds—if that's, you know, if it's fine, if it's reached the gallery and it's—do <laughs> you buy paintings in cash? I guess you might. Probably a check, right? Fifty thousand pounds would be a heck of a lot more than the one. Yeah. Before. And now you pick one. Uh, right. Well, I was gonna, I had a really good point. I can't remember what it was. Oh well. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next one then. The Saldana Diamond Sale. Ooh. Mr. Araldo Sartori, the famous Italian jeweller, arrived at the Grand Hotel yesterday. He is in London to finalise the sale of Saldana's diamond to an anonymous buyer. Hmm. An anonymous buyer. How mysterious. That's interesting. So, anonymous buyer, uh, already kind of dubious, you know, perfect opportunity to steal something from an anonymous buyer because they're not going to kick off if they want to remain anonymous. Uh, also, we know that uh, Gilly, Gilly, Gilly the ghost, it's not Gilly the ghost. What a stupid, <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. Um, uh, Gilly has previous on knocking over hotels. 
You know, one time she stole a hotel guest's entire set of luggage. So maybe... This it sounds one, like a master of disguise as well. Yes, but this also might literally be the same hotel that she, she robbed the first time. And so she might already know the layout. So it's possible that someone's trying to steal a diamond. All the money used to buy the diamond. See, one of the things we're doing when we're reading these newspaper articles, we're trying to think of where's the first actual lead we're going to go to. Yeah. You not you don't want to go to too many, visit too many locations or visit, go visit too many leads because then you don't score as many points. Yeah. So if you can, if you can kind of work out from your initial information where it is you're supposed to go next, then not only are you going to get more points, but you're being like Holmes because that's what Holmes. <laughs> Holmes pulls ideas out of his bum as well. That's what you have to do. <laughs> and after forty cases, we've become quite well calibrated to the sort of nonsense that is in these stories um this although we are six so maybe we should <laughs> maybe we shouldn't be so savvy at this point <laughs> yeah you see this this has a lot in keeping with jilly's previous cases wiggins how do you know any of this <laughs> <laughs> one of our gang has been called for their tea by their mum so we have to pick this up this activity at Trafalgar the decorated archers in Trafalgar Square commemorating those who fought in the second Afghan war will be removed tomorrow on September 4th three days wait no scratch that they will be removed tomorrow on September 4th, three days after the war ended, the wooden arches were fixed between the upper story windows of the building in the square and along many streets leading to that place. So sometimes in Consulting Detective, you get these entries which are like fluff. They're just there to sort of round out the world. But, and, and this might be one of them, like who cares about the arches in Trafalgar Square, but it does sound like there's some kind of scaffolding like that's, that's immediately coming down today. So if if she's maybe like like climbing up to somewhere or crawling along something, that might be why this is happening. I say why this this is happening today. We don't know if anything's happening today at this point. We're kind of again meta gaming. We're assuming that a crime's going to take place today because Sherlock Holmes. Now, see, I'm really glad you point that out because it's there's all these buildings surrounding the the square which could have arches mounted between them. Yeah. which might make accessing certain areas quite easy. <laughs> and that, indeed, example, that might be why Sherlock Holmes has put us on the case today. For example, if you wanted to um, leave a first story w window from Charing Cross Hotel, you could hop across into the National Gallery <laughs> or the Grand Hotel, but particularly the National Gallery where I believe there's a painting <laughs> or something. <laughs> so yeah, that's the another possibility. Swing. This is the, um, what do you call it, wild speculation stage of playing Consulting Detective, where we try and come up with the craziest possible crime that fits the information that we've been given. Because it's usually that. It's never like she's going to mug an old man. Like, it's she's planning something humongous. The good cases give you a little bit of a hook to sort of, like, we've been given this information as to what this, this Gil is a thief. She can disguise herself, hotels. And then from that, you can read the paper and like oh, say, yeah. all good, these little scenarios. Good point. Because maybe maybe she gets into the hotel with a disguise and then it crosses the, yeah. the archers. Yeah. Okay. But, Something to but bear you get in all mind. The, I mean, all we've done is read the intro and the newspaper. Yeah. And we've That's... given these mad ideas. Uh, rooms for rent from August the 16th. <laughs> which I guess they just left this advert in the newspaper for a month. Uh, from August 16th, at a low price, adjoining a stable yard, 68WC. Uh, Allegro Theatre, 94WC, presents Poison, 8pm daily, uh, September 19th to the 25th. So this, perfor this theatre performance isn't happening yet. It's happening in the future. The Haymarket Theatre, grand premiere of Moby Dick, 6 p.m. Saturday, and then 6 p.m. daily until 30th of September. So this performance is happening at 6 p.m. today. The Haymarket Theatre. Okay. So you see, this is where your brain starts. Because <laughs> she's an actress and she's an expert in disguise. Maybe her her legend, her like her, her, her current legit occupation is. In the Haymarket Theatre, 
maybe. And also, if there's a, a production running in a theatre, it presumably would be a lot easier to wander around that building. Okay, okay, when... okay, 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 okay. How about this? How about this? How about this? The next entry says specialist cleaners in all fabrics and clothing serving the Colonial Institute and the Admiralty, right? So here's the thing I'm thinking. If you've if you're an actress, you get the stage performance of Moby Dick, and now you're in disguise, disguised as a captain, and you just walk into the Admiralty over the, the archers <laughs> and you break in and steal war secrets. Maybe. <laughs> I think this this demo is probably quite a bit different to the normal cases just because of the density of all the stuff yeah. that we're coming up with because we've literally got like an, an eighth of what you'd normally <laughs> have for the newspaper to and work like, with. Like three or four leads, potentially. It is something good which I've picked up on. Right? This is a good thing for the demo, bodes well. Um, underneath where it says activity at Trafalgar. Yeah. See, I scanned over that. It was mentioned some Afghan wars that I never bothered reading it. When you read it a second time, and then it describes these scaffolds, and then there's a little illustration underneath oh, saying, wow, Show yeah. these scaffolds. What does that say? Can we zoom in a bit and see what that says? These scaffolds look eminently climbable. The war is over. Long live our beloved queen. Victory. Victory. So, But they go across the road, is the thing. So these, these scaffolds, which at Trafalgar Square... That doesn't See, look like the square, does it? That was like a side road leading off Trafalgar Square. So maybe Haymark... No, see, Haymark, it's two streets over from the National Gallery. I mean, it's possible, right? But it seems more likely to be sort of between maybe the hotel and... I don't know. Chinese Cross Hotel can oh. reach and all the National Gallery. There's the Admiralty mentioned as well, which... Uh, that not really connected, but... Mm, yeah, maybe? Who knows? Something to think about, right? But again, this is the this is the mad speculation point. Maybe our our master thief disguises herself as Moby Dick in order to sneak into the Admiralty and steal naval secrets. That's <laughs> See, insane, this is like the... but it seemed clever when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it's like it's like kind of you can make it like an Ocean's Twelve kind of film, couldn't you? One of these adventures where you're just looking over. The, coming up with these stupid theories <laughs> <laughs> before you've got your team together and before George Clooney and Brad Pitt turn up or something. But that's that's <laughs> where this this game's at its greatest is when you you really it'll turn out to be something really prosaic, but it's fun to just have this sort of discussion. Uh, it's no, but that's good. No, it's good though because like you you can there's the depth in the writing, isn't it? That's so yeah. Specialist cleaners, all fabrics and clothing serve in the Admiralty. Uh, 52 SW and HC congratulations on your bachelor's degree condolences regarding your father all my love RK uh, not sure what that's a reference to <laughs> is it is often it... in cases you'll get weird little personal ads and things like that yeah. which are like directly hinting about something in the case but yeah today maybe not yeah sometimes it's like literary references as well but I don't know enough about Victorian literature to answer that one <laughs> Um, so, uh, the question is, where do we want to go next? And another thing that you get in these games is, or I guess go first, uh, another thing you get in these games is, um, a directory, which is just a list of addresses and names. And I've got one here for illustrative purposes. <laughs> like a 19th century yellow pages. <laughs> yes. Or, no, a 19th century non-brand specific directory. Um... <laughs> And it's filled with hundreds of names and hundreds of addresses. And finding the person you're looking for in here often involves... Often you're just given, like, surnames or initials or something. Nicknames. Nicknames. You also like get... You get Bill A, look for Williams. You yeah. Know. You also get locations of professional places, establishments and stuff. In this game, which is a demo, this is the full directory. Which means some of these some of these places are probably useless, not worth going to. But if we were playing this in the full game, one of the first steps we would do in an investigation is pick out any names that were of significance and then look them up in the directory as potential places to go first. We don't have to in this case because the game has helpfully listed uh, Lydia Niles here, who is uh, Gilly Niles's relative that we don't know because we've not been there yet. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's probably a good first step to go there. 
And what you do once you read the newspaper is you sum up all the sort of what you call them like level zero clues. And this is meta gaming, but generally the game has an escalating series of references away from where you started. So you start with the information you know, and then you move one step and then two steps, and each step further away to us seems like a more valuable clue because you had to make more leaps of judgment to get there. Yeah, so, often as well, you have a really good clue further in. There'll be there'll be a short way to get to it by making some leap or using picking something out of the newspaper, or there'll be a longer, more f- kind of visit-heavy way of getting there yeah. where it's more spelled out to you, but you can get there eventually. So, again, the good cases give you multiple routes to these good clues so you can, if you're not as good at the game, you still get to the same conclusion and you yeah. don't feel like you've failed. <laughs> Which, judging by the reception of the brown box and the, the fall-off of people playing the game, most people are not happy about feeling dumb compared to literally the greatest detective of all time. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think they, they tone it down in the original. I mean, you scored a game, like you say, the greatest detective. <laughs> <You're> not... <laughs> not gonna do well you know maybe making us six years old is a way of like accounting for that in this one like oh you're about as smart as a six year old (laughs) so um in that okay we could agonize over this but we've got some interesting clues i say we just fire in and (laughs) go to where we went to the first time we recorded this which is lydia niles at 33 wc i'm ashamed to be her sister Gilly blames the Haymarket for ruining her ca- acting career, but it's her own fault. She can make amazing, amazing wigs and makeup <laughs> and act so well, but she's never been able to resist talking, taking other people's things because she's a thief. She took new lodging in August, said it's a ground floor room, end of the row, <laughs> and mentioned something about the smell of horse manure. Right. We have Circle to the inter- letter A. <laughs> we have to explain what the f*** we're doing there. Uh, once, once you've played about 40 of these cases, you have to invent new ways to entertain yourself. Sadly, though, this isn't one of those things. We pretty early on decided that it was the first case. It was the first case. <laughs> Sometimes people people say an awful lot in this game and they don't say much. But And so one of the things we started doing as the narrator was doing clue voice, <laughs> which is like a sort of <laughs> fourth wall breaking figure who's become a character in our games who sometimes <laughs> helpfully, but more often than not over eagerly, <laughs> interjects with essentially verbally highlighting things that are important. So what Carl it's was like a hyperlink that you can click on. <laughs> <laughs> what Carl was doing there was mentally noting things to pay attention to as we were going along. I think you said wigs and makeup and <laughs> August. She might dress up or something. <laughs> the the problem with clue voice is if you do it too much, it loses all meaning. The cl- clearly <laughs> The clue in that thing was August and horse manure, because that correlates exactly with the first entry in the newspaper, which is rooms for rent, since August the 16th, adjoining a stable yard at 68 WC. So This is why you read the newspaper. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Here's a new thing for this edition. Oh. The it says at the bottom, circle the letter A. That's right. This seems to be something that the game has inherited or independently invented from mythos tales usually in consulting detective all the information is encoded in just the paragraph but now there's this added like memory that the game has so the game is telling us to note down that we have a clue which will unlock somewhere later on and i'm guessing that this clue is that she's in these lodgings somewhere i think one of the good things about these um item look you know letters or whatever you know these sort of tangible clues is that you can't just sort of brute force the game just by like grinding through locations yeah. as much you do need to go in the right order to get maximum value from the location it is i thought about this a lot when we were we've talked about the circles and some detective too much in our lives <laughs> but one of the things about queen's park i didn't really appreciate was the timekeeping very few games do that sort of time mythos tales does it uniformly and only really exploits it fully once or twice. And I think that timekeeping is a lot of busy work. I much prefer the 
the logical like this has to follow that it doesn't matter when it follows it but it has to come logically afterwards because the actual keeping track of where you are in the afternoon or something is kind of just busy work in, in, you can't really hide a clue inside of time i liked it in mythos tales when it, it did the um like you had to visit like a nightclub at night yeah. for it to friend oh you had to visit a school during the day because at night time it shut <laughs> or not visit a wizard's lair at night like yeah <laughs> i like I liked how you, it made you think of the sequence that you visit a little bit. But it was also more yeah. of a role-playing game, that one, so it, it kind of yeah, worked. Yeah, I like that element. Right then, so... What um, we've, yeah, what we've learned is that uh, Gilly is probably staying at the lodgings at 60... What was it? 68WC. There is a row of lodgings at 68WC. In the yard, pieces of rotten fruit lie next to a barrel marked with a chalk cross, as if they have been thrown at it. Mm. that's interesting so what we, we because we're doing this over skype we've not been quite as diligent keeping notes as we usually are do you want to show the the, the friendly folks at home what our usual thought process looks like it looks like many books yeah this is a these demo are some as well, so. books and we take turns i think i think i tended to write more in these but we yeah we, we write clues in these Bits of evidence that we want to remember for later, just so you can keep track of it. Cometh the hour, cometh the king. Yeah, okay, so that's... But if you just show that again, it does detail our thought process, because in red, we've got all the level zero clues, and then below that, we start noting things down. And you'll notice that <laughs> what we've written down there is Lucinda Thayer, manager, and then Checkley, looks like Remainer there. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then if you flick to the end of the case, when, we, when we're more knackered after hours and hours of talking about it, what notes do we have for those entries? Um, M44, second part. <laughs> and then that just says D1 sanatorium. Curtis likes coffee? Curtis likes coffee. That's all we learned. And that's all we wrote down <laughs> was that Curtis yeah. likes coffee. Some of the clues do get quite short. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, we have A, so we can read on. Uh, ducking out of sight of a boy scooping up horse manure, we approach the house at the end of the row and stop outside a window. Just then a woman leaves the house, counting money and heading for the market at Covent Garden. That's her, mutters Simpson, and this is her lodging. The window is fastened inside, but it looks weak. We need something to break it open. A crowbar or a piece of pipe, asks Tinker. I find stuff like that all the time. I'm a mudlark, you see. Drapes through the river. Mud <laughs> He's turning more into, uh, uh, what is it, like an American Scottish accent. Like a, you know, a blizzard game. <laughs> I find stuff all the time. I'm a mudlark, see, and trips through the river mud looking for bits to sell. We might find something north of the railway bridge. He points to the southeast. <laughs> <laughs> is that is southeast from here north of the railway bridge, or is he just? Right, dumb? I have looked on the map for this, and southeast. You, you're talking like this Charing Cross station, which isn't in the directory, by the way, so we can't <laughs> go there. Oh no, no, we can go there. Can we? Yeah, things don't uh, things don't have to be in the directory to go there. The, those things in the directory are just in the directory. Oh, we can choose to go. To, we can choose to go to Charing Cross if we want. There might not be to anything. To get goddamn pipe. It's like we're in London. <laughs> <laughs> right. We are not going to pick up a pipe and smash into a thing. <laughs> the woman that we're looking for has just walked off. We should just follow her. Just to be clear, right? If we were in a if we were in a Holmes adventure, Holmesian adventure, and we were going to go to a to pick up a pipe, a smoking <laughs> pipe from a tobacconist, the same pipe which the suspect uses, but we're not. We're talking about something to break a window, a lead pipe. No. <laughs> okay, so no, we're not doing that. Um, what have we actually learned here? We've learned about this this barrel with a chalk cross, which. Uh, as I said, we, we, we need to write that down because maybe throwing... She's practicing to throw. And maybe that's why she's going why to the market to a lot. Throw, if, if you're a thief, why would you need to throw something in? Or out. Or... Like a diamond, maybe? Throw a bag of diamonds out? or Something to note down. 
Sometimes it's an odd detail. It is odd little details. I think this is a demo, right? So we can forgive it this, but typically there's more fluff. It, like these two entries will be considered very short in a normal game. So uh, they, they'd usually be less obvious. And uh, this might be irrelevant, but it seems conspicuous. It's also yeah, the density of like high quality clues and they seem much higher, I think, just yeah. because like you say, we're on two it's, sides it's, of it. It's probably not indicative of the the actual box set. Um another thing is Oh, interesting. You know what I think clue B is? Because we've just got B. I think B might be the fact that we're currently tailing the woman. And B might be like the temporal relationship yeah. between the two yeah. of us. And if we went to Covent Garden without B, she wouldn't be there. You're just looking at a market, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that, that fits in with the first part, doesn't it? Because if you just go to this location for the hell of it, it's like you you're get, at some you lodgings. You get the clue, but you don't get the the real live thing that's happening. So you're yeah, always, that's not another, going there with like an ulterior motive. Are that's you? another nice thing about this system. You always arrive logically afterwards, but you're never late for anything. Uh, probably a good idea to follow her to Covent Garden then. Yeah. So, would you take us, please, to uh, 28WC? You see, at this point, I'd be a little bit worried that we're just going down... We've just been led down a path, aren't we? This is the thing. We haven't made any of those knight's moves that leap you from, no. like, a level 0 to a level 2 clue. So, it'll be interesting to see if we get punished for playing the game. 28WC. Have you circled B? Now, this is interesting. It's going straight in with that. So, if you'd have tried to turn up... I you suspect again in the real box you'd get a bit of blur. Yeah. Yeah. We spot Gilly picking up discarded rotten fruit and putting it in a bag. Then she buys a sailor's knife, the type normally used for gutting fish and cutting rope. <laughs> As we follow her out of the market, she looks round and seems to realise we're following her. A moment later she's vanished. Okay. Well, <laughs> so where is she I mean so she's gone right but yeah. what we've got is she she's got some rope based shenanigans we spot Gilly picking up a rotten fruit and putting it in her bag then she buys a sailor's knife so this seems to connect back to the the, the, scaffolding. the scaffolding and the Admiralty and the Colonial Institute and maybe Moby Dick. I'm thinking rope could be like in a theatre, you know, like sandbags and stuff, cutting things yeah, in there. Maybe. That's more like you're going to drop a sandbag on somebody on the stage or something. Though. <laughs> well, maybe that's it. I mean, she, what was it that her sister said in... in... Resents the... Th resents the Haymarket I mean, we're, we're with... assuming that... There's one thing I kept saying throughout all the box sets that we were playing. It, I would love to have a normal case where nothing remarkable happens and the game leans really heavily into the tropes and then just says, actually, it was a uh, mugging or a normal... <laughs> or just a guy got shoved down a pit. Is it possible that we've read far, far too much into the 20-year-old thief who's trying to steal a diamond or break into an art gallery and maybe she literally just wants revenge on the theatre? Because you said cut a sandbag and that got me thinking, like, you, you hoist things up in a theatre? Yeah, like, like, like... Like rigging and lights and stuff. Yeah, messing about up in the rafters, yeah. And if she was going to the theatre... If she was trying to bring in something, like, backstage to facilitate cutting a rope in a theatre, it would have to be a sailor's knife because it's a production of Moby Dick. You know what I mean? Like, you couldn't bring, like, a saw. If it was a production of, help me out here, uh, Hansel and Gretel. What, <laughs> uh, what theatre production has a saw famously oh yeah uh, Arthur Miller's The Saw uh, then she would just bring a saw this is good this bodes well because you've got all these little overlapping themes haven't you yeah you've got sailor's knives you've got Moby Dick you've got the Admiralty you've got an actress you've got a thief you've got yes yes there's this. so, there's so much got... saturation of ideas 
which it felt like, I think you mentioned this earlier, the blue box, even if it were to have been translated well, only a few of the cases really gave you a lot to chew your your imagination over with, you know? You, you got a few interesting ideas, but ultimately it's mostly just tracking where people go. Um, I'm feeling as if the night's move now will be going to one of the theatres. I think the Haymarket Theatre is probably mm. where she's headed uh, tonight, because I believe it said the performance was at 6pm? You see, a little bit of our thought process here, you see, like you're saying, there's the, there's the production tonight... Haymarket was where she worked earlier on. Well, we don't... Oh, yeah, we do know that, don't we? Yeah. Um, you know, so you try and, like... You try and plot a path through the game supported on what you've been told. So the Haymarket Theatre's address is only something you can work out by looking at the map. So if we look at the map, it is in the SW section, and it's number four. So, again... It's a good sign that this demo is flexing all its muscles and it's making use of all the bits and pieces. Uh, would you like to take us to 4SW? Wiggins glances upwards and his jaw drops. Looking up, we see a huge plaster whale suspended above the <laughs> stage It's right to the ropes. Yes! Two that could be cut with a knife, perhaps. <laughs> it's... Oh, sorry, this is the uh, theatre manager. Okay, um, uh... theatre manager is... Um... You know Harbin Wester from Dungeons and Dragons? It's that voice. It's from Moby Dick, the <laughs> theatre manager says. Our most ambitious production to date. At the end, two stagehands climb up and lower it down. Lower it safely down. <laughs> he, po he points up at a rope ladder leading to a narrow balcony which runs round the entire upper story of the theatre. And, and yes, we're no Gilly Niles. She worked here from 74 to December 79 when we caught her stealing and got her sent to Millbank. She's still bitter and angry and has never come back. Not that she'd be welcome anyway. We can't have her thieving from our patrons and she's a great actress, but we'd see through any disguise she could muster. Trust me, we've seen all her tricks. Hmm, now that's interesting. That is interesting. So they'd see through all her tricks. Hmm. Hmm. This entry suggests that she can't get into the theatre in any disguise. Yeah, it sounds like that's what I'm saying. It, seems, it feels, in so, that sense, it feels a bit like a dead end. But the Sailor's Knife Moby Dick... Well, no, Moby Dick... Sailor's Knife and Moby Dick was an association that we put together, which in retrospect is probably not accurate, right? It feels more on the money, the fact that they've got this plaster whale hanging precariously above, <laughs> secured by ropes, which are eminently cuttable by knives designed to cut ropes. But <laughs> we also saw in the market that she's been picking up rotten vegetables. Rotten vegetables. It's not that she was working in the market, buying vegetables, and then practicing to throw the vegetables. She's been throwing rotten vegetables because we saw at the at her lodgings there was a uh, a barrel with a cross on it is she just getting the rotten fruit just because it's been dis it says we spot gilly picking up discarded rotten fruit pointing in the bag is it just because it's f something free that she can practice throwing or something um but like how does that come into the case like she's practicing her aim to throw something else. To throw a knife. <laughs> um, I mean, what do we... Th uh, okay, there's no solution that doesn't incorporate cutting a rope and throwing... She picked up the fruit today and, like, we're following her. So she, the fruit is part of it, right? Yeah, she could just be going back, picking up more fruit to carry on practicing. But yeah, maybe we need to go somewhere else. Like, um, well, okay, here's the other thing: themes or something. Uh, th th there's also the there's also the balcony, right? Because it mentions that this this top section. It like runs uh, around okay. the whole thing, doesn't it? The 
He says the balcony runs around the entire upper story of the theatre. So that kind of implies that any entrance point, like spanning a road off off the theatre. Yeah, you could get into the theatre from somewhere else. Couldn't yeah, you? so what does the map say? This is a Haymarket theatre, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, a good location to go to would either be 86 SW, which is across the road from the Haymarket Theatre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. <laughs> the National <laughs> Gallery is not... Well, It's a bit weird because you've got like a green line on the map, which I think is covering up a road, so you've actually got two roads there. Yes. Uh, the other thing is, is that the picture shows that these these archers run across a road. And the mm. only... The only th building that we can visit that's one road away is 86 sw which actually think, yeah. if you look at the directory actually is the colonial institute was there something in the newspaper about what's going on at the colonial institute is it just cleaners ah specialist cleaners all fabrics and clothing serving the colonial institute and admiralty 52 sw so so a disguise to get into the to the Colonial Institute, you could just nick one from... Yeah, there'd be loads of clothing lying around. Yeah, there'd be loads of, there'd be loads of like, presumably soldiers' uniforms or something. I don't know what the Colonial Institute is and how it's associated with the Admiralty. I'm assuming it's like a, a bunch of soldiers or naval men or something, right? 52SW, is that like the place where the cleaners are employed? That's yeah. That's not the address of anything on the map, is it? 52? No... I think 86 SW is the way yeah, forward, right? Yeah. The Colonial Institute, eh? <laughs> okay. Now, another thing about Consulting Detective is it is set in the past. So, Colonial Institute, getting a big red flag off of that. I really hope this game doesn't take a swerve for the white nationalist right at the last minute, because I've been enjoying <laughs> this so far. <laughs> 86 SW. The Colonial Institute contains books and papers concerning the British colonies. Oh, thank God. It is open to the public, but they refuse to let in a group of street children. <laughs> Incredible. It's almost like hiring street children to do a detective's job is a bad idea. <laughs> it's open to the public, street children. An arch, an arch, sorry. Hello. An, <laughs> an arch runs from an upper story window to the, of the Institute to an open window of the theatre across the road. A kitchen, you, a kitchen girl is throwing out food waste. The window keys are kept in the staff office, she tells us. I can use them if I so please, as can any of them that work here. Footmen, librarians and wardens. As we leave, we see two maids carrying bags of uniforms away down the street, presumably to get them cleaned. That was a very strange little article there, little entry. So, okay, it's told us things we already know, that there is a, a connection between this building and the next one, and if you wanted to get... The window keys are kept in the staff office. I can use them, and can any of them that work here? Footmen library... Okay. It, very, it went out of his way to explain all these various professions that can access these keys. Yeah. She's presumably got some job at this cleaner's place, hasn't she? And either yeah. at the cleaner's or whilst she, as a cleaner, is at this yeah, yeah, yeah. building. She's wandering around getting into I mischief. Think, yeah, it's one or the other, and they're, they're functionally the same. She's probably disguised as a cleaner when she's been casing the joint, absolutely. Um, That's the point. The game does give you a certain amount of leeway between, like, the details. Yeah, of there's, the answer, the there's details. answer in the questions which need to be precise and they're usually quite broad. They need to be accurate. And then there's the actual uh, story bit where Sherlock tells you what it is, where you need to be more precise. And it's like, you can kind of fudge some of the details. Like, okay, she, she, uh, some way or another, she's going to get a uniform. Yeah. So... We don't really know what she's trying to do, do we? Well, she's, going, <laughs> she's going in to the colonial office because she can't get into the theatre. Yeah, she's... No, sorry, we, we don't know what she's trying to do in the theatre. Yeah, that's what I mean, but we've, we've established that, that her way in is... It, 
disguise in through the colonial office, up through the window, across the thing. And now she's in the upper story of the Haymarket Theatre with a knife. Possibly some rotten fruit. Possibly a bag of rotten fruit. <laughs> Which um, she's very good at throwing. Oh! Um, it's like um, Rotten Tomatoes, isn't it? Like, like you, you, you pet not the website. You, it, the website is called Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> because you throw Rotten, rotten Fruit at, at actors, at an acting troupe, because you hate them, because they suck, because you blame them for kicking you out of the acting troupe, even though you're an arrested criminal. Like, if there was something like the we could do, we knowing about this production of Moby Dick, like who the lead actor is. You know, like, if the lead yeah, actor yeah. was one of her rivals... If this was a full case, it. there would be, like, a... She was the understudy or something, and it's, like, yeah. introducing someone... So, but because it's a demo, I think it's probably more cartoony, almost. More, like, irrelevant. We can lead a lot of these details away, because they're not, they're not in the you book. See, it's at this point where you start thinking, well, who are the characters in Moby Dick? What female <laughs> characters are there in Moby yeah, Dick? Yeah, there aren't any, really. We should That should have clued us in immediately that she wasn't disguising herself as Queequeg for f- sake like she's she, she, she's gonna sneak in do you think she's just it's the th- it's the it's, the, it's, it's also the opening night of the performance yeah yeah so if she like starts throwing veg yeah throws <laughs> on veg. the um, actors another thing, get, get crap reviews on it another thing that occurred to me just now was this Moby Dick is on two ropes presumably like suspended like like this. So if you cut one, it just does that, right? <laughs> Which is nothing. I guess you could cut both and then drop. <laughs> I'm feeling better about pelting the troop with the vegetables than I am dropping a, what is it? A plaster whale onto them, killing them all. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, we are six. <laughs> So, like, maybe Sherlock Holmes doesn't send us to stop a f- an attempted murder. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. did she, like, cut the rope? So there's this whale swinging around. <laughs> <laughs> then there's, like, there's, like, rotten vegetables being thrown up on stage. You can make it into a total disaster of a show. <laughs> <laughs> so you're actually doubling down on the cut the Moby Dick down, causing it to crash to the ground, killing millions, rather than the... Okay, well, what... Okay, well, okay, okay. So, the knife... No, I what you're saying, right? If you just cut one rope, you just have it swinging around and it totally <laughs> derails. I'm assuming it's above, like, the... the um, what's the red bit? Like, the frill at the top of a, th- of a, of yeah. a, of a stage. <laughs> I mean, presumably the Moby Dick, would, when that comes down, that'd be like a really big part of the production. <laughs> if you just did that at the beginning. <laughs> so, we must find out what she's planning, and we must try to stop the plan going ahead. So... How, how do we stop the plan going ahead? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, I guess... Bit of meta game in here. What, was the, what other items it is... Or pieces of what letters have we not oh, circled? Okay, yeah. So there's there's C, which is we get a pipe from the train tracks and smash her house open. Which at the moment is that feeling more plausible, isn't it? Which I'm rather low to admit. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I feel like we can probably score what is she trying to do, and in the normal game, that's that's what the game is. The game is to explain the crime. Maybe we just go get the pipe and smash the door in and see what happens. And we, and we don't we don't worry about it, you know. We've done five locations, and I feel like we know what what the what the crack is. I, I, worst case scenario, right? This is a B quest. Ninety two WC. Have you circled B? Yes. Yes. Good. Because if not, you learn nothing. <laughs> <laughs> if you have, you don't. Welcome to the river, friends. Oh, this is Tinker. Is he Scottish? Yeah, Tinker was Scottish. Sorry. <laughs> Can I do a Scottish accent? Welcome to the river, friends. Yeah, that's that's, that's more blizzard. That that's more like a dwarf in an American fantasy film. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the river, friends. Says Tinker, <laughs> stepping into the mud. 
His legs disappear completely. With some uncertainty, we follow, grimacing as the cold sludge slips between our toes. Ten minutes later, Tinker shouts and holds up a strip of metal. Circle the letter C. You can return to locations to new to use new circled letters. Welcome to the circle mechanic. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing in the real box, it won't be so explicit. Yeah, I think these red bits are probably... Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're tutorials, Definitely. yeah. Okay, well, that's good, because it, it knows that we can go back, and I know from reading the rule book that we won't get penalised for it, but it's nice to be told that. Okay, well, I guess we're going back to 68WC. We have one chance. Do we know what to look for? Do not read the rest of this entry until you want to break in. After breaking in, you may not return to Jilly's lodging. Okay. Inside, we find a oh a pamphlet for Moby Dick with a drawing of a whale suspended by two ropes. Uh oh, because it might be the whale. And Saturday, six p.m. circled in pencil next to yes, a. Yes, this is all stuff we know. This is good. A wig and mustache. Simpson throws them into the fireplace <laughs> and holds up a box of matches. I sell matches on the streets. <laughs> oh, vandal. Anyway, at the bottom here, it says, you have time to burn one more thing. This is funny. <laughs> the warden's uniform, the footman... Oh, no. Or the cook's uniform. Mm. Uh... Well, that's bad, because we only... We have warden and footman. We've not ever seen cook, I don't believe. No, we've not narrowed... Well, cook's not relevant. But it was librarian, wasn't it? Librarian, warden, and footman. Wouldn't it be footman? Don't you have footman in theatre? Like ushers? No, but this is to get into the Colonial Institute. Footman is like a doorman, right? Like a footman's like a guy who lets you out of the carriage. And like a warden would be like a... Yeah, you know, a warden that looks after a building, so they presumably be able to wander around. But the, the entry said that they could all. Wait, what was the entry for that? Four? Uh, no. 86. The window keys 86. are kept in the staff office. I can use them if I so please, as can any of them that work here, footmen, librarians, and wardens. As we leave, we see two maids carrying bags of uniform down the street to get them cleaned. Hang on, we can go to other locations after this, can't we? I feel like we have to choose which uniform to burn. Yeah. Now. So this is it. This was, this this it's yeah. Fun. If we go into the cleaners, it will probably tell us exactly which one to pick. And we came here, kind of on a just to see what happens. And what's happened <laughs> is we've been burned. We. Uh... I tell you what's just happened. I might have accidentally glanced, and it's literally no! one sentence. <laughs> So you can't help me choose. No. I'm Great. Just um, I'm going to roll a dice. Don't do that. Come on. Talk it over. Okay, well... Um... <laughs> no, because you can't help. I've chosen to roll a dice. <laughs> right, well, look, in your mind, are you having it as like 50-50 either way? What's your thought process? I'm not going to tell you anything. I don't, I honestly don't think there's a difference. Like, if you're, okay, a warden, the, the goal of the disguise is just to get in the building and get the key. And any of those disguises can get the key. So, what's you're trying to coach me through this. <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to try. It's a... We see a huge plaster whale suspended above the stage by two ropes. It's a Moby Dick, our most ambitious production today. At the end, at the end, two stagehands climb up and lower it down. I, I don't so think can... I don't think that she's. I don't think the disguise has any bearing on the theatre because she'll be up in the rafters and and presumably cuts yeah, this yeah. cuts this rope ladder so no one can get up. So all she has to do is get into the window, which. It. In terms of wandering around inside, I feel like Footman is like door. Footman gets you into the building. 
It's going to be 6 p.m. as well. I feel like Warden is like 9 to 5, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because Warden, I'd say you can wander around wherever you like in the building. But then Footman gets you in the door because it's... It's like, hello, sir. Welcome to the establishment. So what I'm going to do is roll this dice and see what result I get. Uh, this is this is going to be a, a cutaway, like a real video. <laughs> you see... A, a, a board game YouTuber would just record both dice rolls and then cut to the one which which showed the right answer. <laughs> when we're not doing that, okay? This is a legit. Oh, uh, okay. So um, one to one to ten. One to odds and evens. Oh yeah, odds. Warden evens footman. I got, actually got to hit. I got. I got to hit. I got to hit the paper. Evans, footman, and now it might look like a lot of of time passed between that and now, and it did because I f up a lot. The important point is we we fairly rolled, and then we had to roll a bunch more times for the sake of the video, but we chose footman completely randomly in spite of Carl's attempts to uh, cheat. So. Uh, <laughs> I think we're done, right? We're, we're done. In, we've we've burned a uniform. We've solved the crime. Questions. <laughs> Questions. Question one: Which two buildings does Gilly intend to enter? The Colonial Institute and the Haymarket Theatre. I concur. Question two: What two items did she acquire? I said two, because it says two there. It actually says, question two. There's a bus going by. <laughs> it can't be a bus, it's midnight. It must be a tractor. It must be some <laughs> Shh, stop chuckling, you absolute monster. It's midnight and I want to get this wrapped up. <laughs> Deadly serious. <laughs> two. What items did she acquire at the market, and why? Rotten fruit and vegetables, or fruit, to yeah. throw at the actors on stage, and a fisherman's knife to cut yeah. some rope. A sailor's knife? Yes, to cut, yes. To cut a rope ladder. Cut some rope. <laughs> <laughs> this is where, in some of the case books, we diverge. Where Carl's like, yeah, it's to cut rope non-specific but he secretly thinks it's the moby dick and i'm like it's to cut the rope ladder she's not going to murder people with a moby dick we both agree on cutting rope <laughs> <laughs> question three what is her motive um it's around the answer to question two sorry and i can cut nice this i can cut, cut this it's fine three what's her motive um she resents the theatre for ruining her, ruining her acting career sure. and wants to screw up their play. Yeah, revenge. revenge. We'll put revenge and we'll give ourselves the points regardless. Oh, we can't, <laughs> we can't do that because it's on video. We need to be extremely specific. Question four. Have you burnt her costume? And which one? Yes, we burnt her costume. We burnt the footman's costume. Yes and yes. So I hope those are two sets of points in case we burnt the wrong one and that's it it's as easy as that nine hours later and you finish the demo for consulting detectives green box <laughs> let us read the answer solution <laughs> in a lofty chamber of saint bart's hospital a lone figure is hunched over a bench working feverishly with a set of bubbling test tubes he turns in the flickering blue light of Bunsen lamps, a pair of alert eyes fix on us. Is this the solution for this quiz? <laughs> for this, <laughs> <laughs> this is Sherlock, shush. Wiggins, he says, I have seen rooms on Baker Street I intend to take. If only I can find a fellow willing to share them, wink. With luck, <laughs> you will not have to visit this dim laboratory again. But now, Gilly the Ghost... I assume you went to her sister Lydia first, ding, mm -hmm. whose description of Gilly's lodgings leads you to the stable yards listed in the Times, ding. Lydia, 
also said Gilly worked for the Haymarket, and they say they caught her stealing or her sent to prison in 79. Aha! Perhaps Gilly wants revenge, but has found it difficult because the Haymarket staff say they recognize her when disguised. This is a side note. This is a lot more literal than these usually are. Holmes has been very direct. Isn't yeah, he's just telling us the what should have done. Yeah, I guess it is a tutorial. Today, she went to Covent Garden Market to collect old fruit and to purchase a sailor's knife. So, disguised as a staff member, she plans to enter the Colonial Institute. The National Gallery would have too much security. And then cross the arch to the theatre, just as Moby Dick begins. Cutting the rope ladder to the balcony, she will pelt the actors with rotten fruit. Sorry, just to dial back there. Cutting the rope ladder to the balcony. <laughs> and no other rope. <laughs> <laughs> she will pelt the actors with rotten fruit carried in the bag. Note, she had been conducting target practice on a barrel in the stable yard at 68 WC. Ding. Finally, she could cut the rope on the... Oh. <laughs> All the ropes. <laughs> okay. So it turns out that she is actually a wannabe murderess as well. Uh, she was cutting all ropes. You are right, Carl. You get full points. I get partial credit. <laughs> Finally, she could cut the ropes from the plaster whale, letting it fall and shatter, even though we've discussed earlier that that's impractical. Putting an end to the production. <laughs> With your particular talents, I imagine you may have found a way to destroy her disguise and foil that's her right, plan. Holmes, we cut down the whale ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Killing all. We Did set the theatre on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the detective walks over and crouches. Wiggins, I am impressed enough to appoint you and your associates my unofficial force. The Irregulars! He turns to address us directly. You must know that working for me will test you to your limits, and perhaps beyond. It will not be easy, but I can promise you this, my young friends. You will never want for excitement. There is nothing like the thrill of the chase when the game is afoot! He thrusts a copy of the Times into our hands, a death notice circled in red, and then lean forwards with an enigmatic smile we shall come to know well. So, he whispers, shall we begin? So we pretty much got that. We had a little dispute about the particulars, but, you know, in the end, the better man won, apparently. Uh, let's score. <laughs> I didn't think they were cutting the ropes. You didn't think they were cutting the whale. Turns out they were doing both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Holmes would have solved this case in five leads. Which we I did it in five, didn't we? Oh, I think we did it in five, but we, we went to the house and burned the wrong uniform. Oh, no. Oh, we don't was it the right uniform? It didn't say. I guess we'll... That's a good they went to six. Oh no, right? we went to six. Yeah, we went to the train yard to get a. Well, how did Holmes do it in five then? Oh, we have. I hope they're not doing this again. No, well, we solved it in five, but we 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 did six to burn the uniforms. So maybe Holmes didn't burn the uniform. Maybe the, the uniforms a B quest then. I guess we'll find out. Okay, your score. Question one. Colonial Institute. Fifteen points. Haymarket Theatre. Fifteen points. That's thirty points. Uh, question. Two. Rotten fruit. To throw at the actors and the patrons. Yeah. 20 points. Nice. And knife to cut the ropes. 20 points. Nice. For a total points, of yeah. 40 points. And it just says it just says knife to cut ropes. So our agonizing was for nothing. I wonder if I can cut all that out. It's very funny though, so I'll leave it in. <laughs> Question three. Revenge. <laughs> 30 she points. wants revenge on the Haymarket Theatre for ruining her acting career. So wants to sabotage the Moby Dick performance, full stop. It does just say revenge here, so for 30 <laughs> points, revenge. Interesting. It is half points. If you burnt the wig and the moustache, you gain 20 points. And another 20 if you burn the footman's uniform. So we deserved half of those, but earned all of them by rolling a dice. Because Simpson burns the the other bits automatically, right? Yeah. That's you get twenty points for doing that thing again, don't you? So yeah, that's thirty, forty, 
70. 140 points. Minus 5 for just the extra location. That's 135 points. And Whoa. even though we guessed the footman, even if we'd burnt the wrong one, that would have still be 115. So that is an extraordinarily <laughs> high score. <laughs> it's the highest we've ever scored in Consulting Detective. Uh... Check that. that that does feel like a high score. Well, then there you go. 135 points on the demo of the green box of Consulting Detective. You can't say fairer than that. Um, thoughts and feelings after this case? Uh, it felt, I suppose in hindsight, it looks very like, it's very tutorially. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Holmes explains step by step what he did and what you should have done before you get to the points <laughs> yeah and that being exactly what we did it, it feels like quite a narrow case that you know that you, you couldn't really go that wrong on that it'd be said, interesting to see what the other locations are actually. well we can go over them it does seem like what i liked about it was it felt very open at the beginning and it, it gives the false impression of bigness which is important in these uh like you say it does feel like a tutorial um which is good because the way board gamers work, they tend not to see this as like the next iteration of a thing. They tend to just buy the most recent edition. So I think a lot of people bought the blue box as like a, oh, it's the most recent one, so it must be the most up-to-date one. I will yeah, buy rather this. Than mission pack. Yes, sort of rather than being yeah. an expansion to the first box. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I'm glad that this green box seems to be more conscious of people coming into the game. And... Uh, I really like the the uh, alphabet system for keeping track of your items. So, good use of language, well written, lots of imagination to it. There was no stupid bits. <laughs> there was no, no like, nonsense. What's going on? I don't uh, understand what's happening. I think that is a very promising demo for this game. It, I don't. Mm, it might even repair the damage that the blue box did to the reputation of this series. There were no editorial problems with that at all that I could see. I'm pretty... I'm looking forward to the green box and I might buy it at launch. It comes out <laughs> at this date below. I'm not looking it up now because it's very late <laughs> and it's, it's, it's half midnight and we're done with this case. Um, good job with the demo. Repairs a lot of reputation. And um, I hope you, the, the, the quester at home, enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more, I think the game is £30, so you can buy it and just post it to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I have been uh, Mr. Jordan. I have been joined by Mr. Carl. This has been the first of potentially one video board game review. And... Uh, You've been watching Northern Voices, where we interview Northern playwrights such as... <laughs> Carl, He's not a... Carl, this is the sign-off. You can't start riffing in the sign-off. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, and thanks for watching. Smash that bell. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs>